finally, finally, finally there's something. Something that I think could solve the goddamn traffic problem. Yeah. I mean, you can think of these like, they're sort of like wormholes. It, it like, it's just like you drop down the worm, like you're, you're driving around, oh, I need to get to the other side of LA or New York or whatever, drop down the wormhole, phew, pop out the other side. Um, and then you can just drive normally. I mean, I think this is like really a panacea. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. This is gonna be my most bought, I'm not even gonna make that joke guys, abort mission, abort, abort, it's not worth it. But in all seriousness, we're talking today about Elon Musk's The Boring Company, who dig tunnels. Yeah, super exciting. Many of you will be familiar with this company, others, not so much. They've kind of been operating almost in stealth mode, they're getting contracts, they're doing real work in the real world, producing real revenue, yet not too much discussion. More people know about the flamethrowers than what the boring company actually does, so let's change that. But first, hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get a free stock, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So let's look at some highlights from the boring company presentation with Elon Musk outlining why the company exists, what their plans are, how much room there is for improvement and plenty more. <laughs> ah, fuck. That was the wrong video. Sorry, guys. Let's try that again. Thanks for coming to uh, this hole in the ground. I mean, would it be inc incredible if you could travel around LA, New York, DC, Chicago, Paris, London, anywhere at, a, at 150 miles an hour? That'd be ph phenomenal. <laughs> Traffic is soul destroying, we must, must go away. I, I mean, I've lived in LA for 16 years and traffic has gone from like, just like seventh level of hell to like the eighth level of hell. And you know, it's terrible. Finally, finally, finally there's something, something that I think could solve the goddamn traffic problem. Yeah. Why tunnels? The thing about tunnels is that you can go 3D underground. The inherent problem with the way cities are constructed is that you've got all these tall buildings that are in 3D and then a road network in 2D. And then everyone wants to go in and out of the, that 3D building at the same time. Necessarily, this will result in traffic. You have to make transport 3D. This is, after all, the same guy who said, we need to make rockets reusable, and then did it. Typical disruptive innovator. Same guy who said we need to stop producing fossil fuel burning internal combustion engine vehicles and make compelling electric vehicles so we can transition the world to sustainable energy. Next minute, Tesla. The point I'm making is that Elon Musk has a history of going after big problems and being successful despite the odds being stacked against him. Huge, transformative, enormous disruptions, not incremental improvements, not marginal increases, not slight changes and steps forward, but complete transformative disruption. A boring company is going to be another one of these examples. It's super early days now, but if we cast our mind forward, 10, 15, 20 years and imagine what transportation in our major cities around the world is going to look like, I have a funny feeling that tunnels are going to play a very big role. The opportunity here is absolutely enormous. So be mindful guys, even though it may not sound super exciting, oh they dig some holes in the ground. When you think about the number of people living in densely populated cities, the amount of money those cities have and spend on roads, infrastructure, transport, etc. This is going to become a no-brainer and we're seeing that now. The boring company is already securing contracts with commercial and city partners and this is just the beginning. The more cities, companies, organizations and institutions who learn about what the boring company can offer, the more we'll be taking them up on their services in the future. I have no question the boring company in a few years time will be doing billions of dollars of annual revenue and to be honest, I don't really see an end to that. Unless somebody else can come up with superior tunneling technology, I do see this as becoming the future of transport in our major cities. It just makes sense. The great thing about tunnels is that there's, there's no limit to how deep you can go. Tunnels are immune to weather. It does not matter if there's a tornado. It doesn't matter if there's like an ice storm. It doesn't matter what's going on above ground. If you're in a tunnel, you're safe and secure. The other thing is you, you, you can't see, hear, or feel the construction. So you will not hear, see, or feel the tunnels being created. 
And unlike freeways or any kind of surface transit, it will not divide communities. You're not, it's, you don't have to like basically railroad through communities. You can just, you can weave the boring system tunnel network into the fabric of a city without changing the character of the city. We'll have this revolutionary transport system and your city will still feel like your city. What's the problem with tunnels? They're, they usually take a very long time to build and they're very expensive. So typically a tunnel will take three to six months per mile. In some cases it'll take a year per mile and they can cost up to a billion dollars per mile. The LA subway extension that just got completed uh, cost two billion dollars for two and a half miles. There was a subway extension in New York that I think cost two billion dollars for a mile. So clearly something needs to be done to revolutionize tunneling technology. We need to be able to build tunnels way faster uh, and for a hell of a lot less money. The, the fastest a tunneling machine in the world right now is 14 times slower than a snail. This is our goal, we must be faster than a snail. What are we doing to increase uh, the speed of, of tunneling? As we got into it, we learned more and more about uh, tunneling and why, they take, why it takes a long time. In a given hour of tunneling, only about 10 minutes of the hour is spent actually digging. Then the other 50 minutes are spent erecting the, re the tunnel reinforcements, laying down tracks, doing logistics and a bunch of other stuff. So just automating the segment placement and solving the logistics issues will actually give you about a five-fold increase in, in tunneling speed. A lot of these things, like when you boil it down, it's not actually, it's, it's hard to do. It's, not, it's difficult engineering, but there's, there's no Nobel Prize required here. This is, it's work, but it's very solvable. The other thing that needs to happen is simultaneous drilling and tunnel reinforcing. So you need to be able to drill, and reinforce at the same time. Right now, all tunneling machines drill, stop, do a bunch of reinforcements, then drill, stop, do a bunch of reinforcements. The, the, the combination of automatic, automated segment placement and being able to drill while tunneling, like I said, is about a five-fold increase in, in speed. Then, with our design, we've also tripled the power of the drill. So it can drill three times faster. The, the common, that, that, that results in a, in, in a theoretical net speed increase of about 15 compared to the next best tunneling machine. So, and, and hopefully we'll beat our snail. So aspirationally, we should be slightly faster than a snail after doing those things. If ever there was an area or a technology ripe for disruptive innovation with big brain engineers working under a great leader, it is tunneling. And a few other things that decrease the cost are on-site integration, meaning like building the tunnel reinforcing segments on-site instead of having them be built far away and trucking them in, using the, the dirt that we dig out of the tunnel to form the concrete for the reinforcing segments. So the, the, the steel reinforced concrete segments are 70% just dirt. Uh, but amazingly, uh, in other tunneling situations, they actually truck the dirt from the tunnel out and truck new dirt in, which makes no sense. So we just use the dirt from the tunnel, add some cement and some steel, and create these reinforcing segments on site. Like a lot of these things are really quite elementary, but are not done. What a low key savage Elon is. I mean, good question, Elon. What the fuck has everybody been doing in the tunneling industry for the last few decades? Oh, that's right. They've been staying comfortable and familiar. Of course. It's too hard to try something different. It's scary. It's new. It might not work. Just stay comfortable and do what you've always done. Having a, a narrower tunnel diameter, not having a, a gigantic tunnel, but just having a tunnel that, that sort of it is just right for vehicles is also important. We developed an electric locomotive, of course. Uh, it seems obvious, but uh, other tunneling efforts use diesel locomotives, which is problematic in a tunnel because it, it absorbs all the oxygen and emits noxious gas. Um, this is an obvious thing to make electric. And then uh, selling bricks. So about 15% um, of, of tunneling is cost is just trucking the dirt out. So we thought, well, what can we do on site that would alleviate that, that dirt cost? So we, we actually are just making bricks. So we're going to make bricks out of the dirt from the tunnel and then sell the bricks. And we should be able to uh, completely get rid of the, the dirt removal cost. And actually, depending on how many bricks we sell, the tunnel could actually pay for itself with just bricks. So we'll be selling bricks at 10 cents a, a brick which is less than at Home Depot, which I'm told is 25 cents a brick. So get your discount bricks here. It's going to be great.
And in case anyone's wondering, they are actually doing this already. I'll put some video on screen now showing these bricks being created and also show in Monty Python in reference, a little bit of a watchtower made of boring company bricks. And, and then if anyone shows up and it's, needs bricks for affordable housing, it's free. So, um. okay, we're gonna do all sorts of brick kits uh, with bricks that fit into each other and like have like um, giant sized Lego kits. We drilled this tunnel with uh, our first generation machine, Godot. Um, we're, we'll start drilling soon with our second generation machine, Linestorm, which is about a three-fold improvement over the, the current state of the art. And then Proof Rock will be our third generation. Uh, we'll start building that up early next year. Uh, the parts are starting to arrive, and that'll be a 15-fold uh, improvement over the state of the art. So don't, normally, it, it, the tunnels cost, like I said, on, uh, up to a billion dollars. So like a, a, a discount tunnel would be sort of $200 million but we're able to build this tunnel for about $10 million. So I think that this is very important to prove a concept for the technology. And we have three, three tunnel products. One is the loop that uh, is for transportation pods. That does a transport tunnel. Um, we're also seeing a lot of interest in just utility tunnels where a municipality can, can get a big tunnel and then put uh, water mains and electricity lines inside the tunnel and then uh, they can actually service, like if they had a, a, a water main break, instead of it flooding uh, the, the main street in the city, you, they can actually go in and in, into the, the boring company tunnel and fix the water main. Um, so it actually saves cities a lot, of, a lot of grief. And then just transport of like water and sewage and stuff. The loop that we're talking about, it consists of autonomous electric vehicles, the combination of autonomous electric vehicles uh, with a deployable uh, guide wheels. Uh, so that uh, it braces itself against the side of the tunnel so that it's safe even if the car loses power or even if somebody, somebody goes crazy uh, or there's like a mechanical failure, those guide wheels keep the car centered in the tunnel and ensure that you can go through the tunnel very fast um, and still be safe. Then in terms of, of, of uh, stations, these are the, the intent here is to have many more stations than you'd have in a subway. So at least 10 or 20 times more stations that, than you'd have with a subway. Um, this is also very important because then you can intersperse the stations throughout the city um, and not dump a ton of traffic in one location. So by, by distributing, by having many, many stations, uh, you, you, you ensure that people get closer to their destination and you don't disrupt the traffic pattern around where these, the, the loop exits. Um, and then you, depending upon how much room you have, you can have an elevator which only takes up a few parking spaces. You can have like a, a, a spiral ramp or or a long ramp, um, and you combine that with fast, low-cost tunnels, and, and, and I think you've got a very exciting transport solution. Now, the, now the thing about going 3D, as I was mentioning earlier, is that um, you, can, you can just keep expanding the number of tunnels. So one of the questions we're often asked is, well, sure, if, if you build this tunnel, then people will use it, and then it'll just get full, and, and then we'll be back to where we started, and, and it's like adding a lane on the freeway you add the lane, but then the traffic expands to fully available volume. But the thing about going 3D is that you could have like three, you could have six, you could have 16 tunnels going in the same direction. So you can have as many tunnels as you want. And I'm pretty sure everyone in the United States is not gonna move to LA. But you could literally build enough tunnels to transport everyone in the United States in LA. There is no limit. So the system can be improved and expanded indefinitely. And, and it's really about, about making transport 3D. The way it works is, uh, there'll be a main artery for the, for the tunnel, which travels at 150 miles an hour. It's kind of like an underground highway. So if you, if you think of say, the way a subway works, a, a subway you, is like a bunch of stop streets. You, you, you keep stopping. So the average speed on a subway is typically, including stops, is about 10 miles an hour. The way the loop would work is that you'd have, a, you'd have main arteries that are traveling at 150 miles an hour, and only when you want to go to, to an exit would you have an off-ramp. So you, can, so you can travel the vast majority of your journey without stopping at 150 miles an hour and only slow down when you get to your exit. And then automatically transfer from one, from one tunnel to another. It's like a 3D highway system underground, basically. We will have continuously uh, operating uh, cars in, in the loop for those that do not have a car. So this will be, we'll actually give priority to pedestrians and cyclists with cars that are continuously circulating in the loop. So even if you don't have a car, you can still use the system. This is, I really want to emphasize that. But these are the wheels that we were talking about. So the, this is really 
a small but very important um, element is having a retractable wheels that uh, when, you, when you're driving down the road normally, they retract and go under the car, you don't even see them. But when you get into the tunnel, they deploy and allow you to go through a narrow tunnel very quickly and effectively like, like a little train. Um, and this is something that uh, we, can be applied to any autonomous EV. So to be clear, this is not intended to be restricted to a Tesla. Obviously, for convenience sake, I use a Tesla. But the, this, this is not intended to be some sort of walled garden or, or just for Teslas or something like that. Any autonomous uh, EV can be outfitted with these guide wheels. Why autonomous? Well, it, it means you can go very, very fast and brake very quickly. Like we expect that you can probably do uh, one vehicle per second through the tunnel. Um, typically on, on, a, on a freeway you can do, without autonomous vehicles, you can do a, a car every two seconds. But with autonomy, we think you can do a car at least every, every second. And w with ra radar-based and vision-based braking, you can do so very safely. I mean, you can think of these like, they're sort of like wormholes. It, like, it's just like you drop down the wormhole, like you're, you're driving around, oh, I need to get to the other side of LA or New York or whatever, drop down the wormhole, phew, pop out the other side, um, and then you can just drive normally. I mean, I think this is like really a panacea. Those of you who haven't lived in a major city may not really grasp how incredibly desperately needed this type of transportation system is. A little over half a decade ago, I lived in Sydney and actually had a job. <laughs> Imagine that, me having a job. If anyone's wondering, I got fired from my first and two full warnings at my second. Clearly not a great employee. I'll take the entrepreneur label any day, thanks. Anyway, the point is, I used to travel to that job via public transport and it used to take me over one hour each way. Had I instead decided to drive a car to work, it would have taken around two hours. Here's the kicker. If I'd simply have walked out my front door and began to casually jog, I would have arrived earlier than going by public transport. Problem is, I would also have stank like a festering garbage truck, so that wasn't really an option. The point is, as Elon alluded to earlier, having 2D transportation systems in 3D cities just makes no sense, and it must change. As I was mentioning, elevators prefabricated. You can also do a passive spiral uh, ramp. Um, and you can install you can install these anywhere: parking lots, garages, uh, little alcoves. Uh, the elevator itself only takes as much as two parking spaces on the street. So if if you can you just have a station in exchange for two parking spaces, that, that's that's basically the size of a, of a station. You can you can interleave these stations throughout the throughout cities wherever there's a, um, you know a couple parking spaces um, or a little little patch of road. Pretty much anywhere. You can actually even have them come up in underground garages. And then one day it will connect to the Hyperloop. But uh, that's uh, for another time. What I think this really amounts to is, is an actual solution to the soul crushing burden of traffic. This is, uh, this is something that I think will, will actually work. It's scalable. Um, and we have a demonstration tunnel here. And we, we expect to expand this over time to many cities all around the world. Um, and uh, and give people more time for their friends and family. What a beautiful way to sum things up there. It's really just about more time. Time for friends, family, whatever means something to you. Like SpaceX, like Tesla, Boring Company is an incredibly disruptive entity that is going to change the way things are done forever and improve life for millions of people. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you live in a major city? Would the Boring Company save you arduous, torturous trips, waiting in traffic, delayed, etc., trying to move from point A to point B in your city because the transportation system sucks? Shit. And finally, do you, like I, have a hunch that maybe the boring company has an ulterior motive, and that is to help with the colonization of Mars. Fly there on a SpaceX rocket, bore out your initial base in underground tunnels with boring company tech, and of course, what kind of vehicles are you going to be driving around on another planet? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan, this is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Deposit $100 in your Webull account, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the roulette wheel, you'll either get Nike, GoPro or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at 
patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.